All right, let's get straight to the point. So one night I was looking through Craigslist as I often do, and I found a listing that caught my eye in particular. I happened to pick up two free gaming computers, which happened to be right behind me. So this first PC in the acrylic case is in pretty decent condition, other than the case being a complete mess. Nothing really is missing or broken from what I can tell at this point. I couldn't really determine much just by looking at it at first. However, I noticed that the power supply seemed to be pretty decent at 500 watts and having an 80 plus gold certification. The other bit of information that I was able to determine at first glance was that the graphics card was a GTX 660, but the RAM and processor I couldn't identify just on site. The condition of the other PC was significantly worse. Not only was the case scratched and dented, but it almost seems like some of the components were literally just thrown in the case. The power supply was loosely at the bottom and not even in the correct orientation, not to mention only one of the power supply cables was present. The graphics card wasn't screwed in, and the cables were strewn about like a rat's nest. This one's gonna require a lot more work, but I think it's gonna turn out great if I'm able to fix some of the minor dents and scratches. So basically in this video, we're going to be taking a look at these computers and how we can fix them up, what's inside of them, all that kind of good stuff. So if you like building computers, but like knowing about computers, then this video is for you. If not, man, I need views. Also, before anything else, I'm recording this segment with this microphone, so I highly apologize. It probably doesn't sound too good. My other microphones are currently packed up right now. Yes, if you couldn't figure out or if you don't know me, I am moving, which is why I haven't been uploading as much lately. Do expect normal upload schedule to be back in December for now using this weird upload schedule. Anyway, uh, let's take apart these PCs. So first, I'm gonna take all the components out of the computer, uh, lay it out, clean the case, clean everything up, and then I'll put it back together. So here you can see I'm just taking everything out of the case. It was actually more difficult than you would imagine because this case was particularly non-user friendly. I'm removing things like the power buttons just so that it's easier to clean and that by no means made it easy to clean at all because it was very difficult. There was a lot of grime on the case, especially being clear. It's uh, really difficult to keep it clean. And with cleaning components, you see I'm using this brush here, and normally I would accompany it with some canned compressed air, but I was out, so it made my job a lot harder, especially with small areas like the GPU fans. The CPU cooler was very dusty, as you can see. It was completely caked in dust, and I honestly don't understand people who let their PCs get like this. So despite all these components being pretty old, this one actually hadn't been peeled yet, so that was a bit of a nice retro peel. The RAM in the system looked really nice, and the GPU being a GTX 660 had a pretty beefy cooler. After cleaning the fans and the motherboard, I started on the power supply, which had a lot of dust in it as well. Alright, so next day, just woke up at 6 a.m. Uh, I got some time before school, what better way to spend it than to put together this PC? So assembly was not nearly as difficult as taking this PC apart. Now that everything was cleaned, all I had to do was just put the components back in place, and it was pretty easy. Something I tried to do was really tidy up the cable management, especially with a case like this that's literally clear. There's not a lot of options for hiding cables, but I think I did pretty good considering the circumstances and the experience that I have. I did however run into some issues with the expansion card mounting brackets or whatever you want to call them. Some of the threading for the screws was all messed up and sometimes the brackets were just bent, but I did manage to get the Wi-Fi card and GPU installed successfully, despite it being an annoying process. After reconnecting all the components, I did also add some LED strips, which you'll see at the end of the video when we go over the specs and benchmark the PCs. Alright, computer number two is right here. So, uh, let's take this thing apart. So here I'm removing the components, and it was actually pretty easy considering that a lot of them weren't even mounted properly, they were just sort of thrown in there. So the rest is pretty straightforward, just removing the cables and fans from the case. I do want to note though that these fans were even dirtier than the last PC. Again, I have no idea how this even happens. But the removal process was quite straightforward, and the components were easy to remove as I mentioned.
as you can see, the areas where the fans were were covered in layers of dust. Like this is some of the worst dust I've seen in a PC, especially with a gaming machine. This is horrible for performance and can cause major slowdowns. So here you can see I'm using some pliers to sort of bend the case back into shape. There was some parts where it was malformed and I'm just trying to get it back to a usable state. Just finished taking apart that PC, so now let's put it back together. I'm definitely not recording this after I put it together. Don't even worry about it. So as you can see, putting this one together is pretty straightforward, and I even spice it up with some red LED fans from Corsair. I also had to swap out the power supply because the one that was in it didn't have any of the cables, and I put this CPU cable extender in there. It doesn't really match, but it's what I had, and the power supply cable wouldn't reach to the motherboard. As you can see, I also put in a DVD drive, and I'm closing it up. This PC was a lot less complicated, and it was a pretty easy build overall. So here I'm setting up this area for benchmarking the PCs. And while I originally intended to run the Time Spy benchmark on both of these, as you will see, the first PC isn't compatible, but at least we can compare the performance rankings between the two PCs. If you don't know what a benchmark is, it's basically a series of tests performed on a computer to see how it will perform in certain situations. So let's run the benchmark on the first PC. For both tests, I will be using the same 500 gigabyte Samsung 860 Evo SSD, and both PCs will be running Windows 10. There we go. Oh my gosh, it's actually booting. Okay, definitely gonna need to update some drivers. Now that we got the drivers installed, let's get some benchmark software. Let's test this PC. So I tested this first PC using 3 d Mark's CloudGate benchmark because the TimeSpy benchmark wouldn't run on this system. It ended up with a score of 2,179 and ranks in the 11th percentile of computers, meaning that it is better than 11% of computers tested. So realistically, this system couldn't be used for any kind of modern gaming, and I think this is actually due to the graphics card, as this particular card was never meant for gaming and is just a budget option. However, the processor is actually all right. Oh, monitors. What the? What is that? What was that? <laughs> what is that? So with PC number two, I ran the Time Spy benchmark, which is sort of the standard for benchmarking PCs nowadays. And because this is a different benchmark than the first PC, it makes it really hard to compare because from straight numbers with a score of 1,476 and a ranking of the third percentile, you would assume that this PC is significantly worse than the first, but that's just not true. Because this particular benchmark is a lot more difficult to run and the PCs being tested with this are generally more modern. Despite what the numbers say, this PC is actually significantly better than the first, and I can prove this by doing some simple math and running a few more tests. 
So what I decided to do so that I could compare both PCs fairly is that I ran both benchmarks on my personal gaming PC. That's the Time Spy and CloudGate benchmarks. And so my reasoning was if I could compare the CloudGate scores from PC number one and my personal computer and the Time Spy scores from PC number two and my personal computer, I could somewhat make a rough calculation of what the Time Spy score would be if PC number one could run it. So as a point of reference, my personal rig has a Core i5-9400F 6-core processor, an RTX 2060 Super with 8 gigs of VRAM, and 32 gigabytes of 3200 MHz CDR4 memory. My computer's final score for the Time Spy benchmark was 7720, and it scored in the 62nd percentile. So obviously the CloudGate benchmark was pretty easy for my computer to run because it was such an old benchmark and the hardware at the time was a lot slower than what we have now. But it ended up with a score of 29,107 and ranked in the 92nd percentile. Now this math is very crude, but I was able to predict the Time Spy score of PC number one to be about 571, which is pretty terrible. And basically how I did this was by first finding the percent difference between the CloudGate scores of both PCs. And what I found was essentially that the score of PC number one was about 7.4% of the PC of my personal computer. So assuming the performance difference would be the same, I multiplied the time spy score of my personal rig by 0.074 to get the approximate score of PC number one. Calculating the ranking, however, was a lot more difficult, and I ended up not being able to figure out a valid solution solution for this because the ranking is going to be a lot different for both benchmarks based on the number of computers tested and the percentage of computers within a certain performance range and it just made it pretty much impossible but I'm sure there's someone out there that can explain how to do this in the comments but we're not here for a math lesson anyway I sort of sketchily predicted that would be 571 for this PC. Alright so if you did enjoy this video make sure to leave a like with this video in particular it really did take a long time, especially with the editing portion. And I know I haven't really made any videos like this, so hopefully you guys did enjoy it. But either way, let me know in the comments whether you want to see more of this type of content. And if you're not already, make sure to hit subscribe because I can't decide what kind of videos I like to make, so I'm sure there's something you'd like on my channel somewhere. But besides that, thank you so much for sticking to the end. really appreciate you watching, and I'll see you all next time.